I hope someone died. I don't know that's what that was. You hate kids, apparently. I blow the lid off <laughs> the whole myth of babies and how much they contribute to society. Lazy little loafers. So now this is really what blows the lid off. Like this was written prior to you, not this, but the New Yorker article. It was written prior to you being a mom, wasn't it? I have to confess, it was Though it was never mean-spirited. What happened was I was in New York one day, walking home, and if you've ever spent a lot of time in New York, you know that much of the time you feel like a, a pack animal. You know, you're constantly carrying a million bags, and you're dragging your groceries home, and you're exhausted, and you're sweaty. And I was dragging myself home and saw a baby being pushed past me in very regal fashion, just sort of sprawled out in a stroller, and the baby happened to be wearing sunglasses, which gave him this, or her, this appearance of utter lassitude. Were you angry or were you jealous? <laughs> totally jealous. I would much rather be pushed around in a stroller. But also, I thought, boy, kids with sunglasses look funny. They look so, they look like little old, movie producers sitting around a swimming pool in Beverly Hills, and the image was very funny to me. So I spun that out into a humor piece which ran um, as a shouts and murmurs in The New Yorker probably about 12 years ago. But then after my son was born and a children's book editor approached me and said, you know, this is really funny. It would make a great kid's book with the narrator being an older child looking at a younger child. Well, how did you feel when your, your son was born and the tables were turned and now you're the push person pushing along the, the lazy little child? Oh, I, he's going to pay for this for the rest of his life. <laughs> uh, it's an incredible, actually, it's one of the things about parenthood that's the most revelatory is you, and particularly if you become a parent late as I did, where suddenly you, everything you care about or wish for or hold valuable is sublimated to the needs of this little child. <laughs> it was funny then to take this piece and view it now, just a few years later, and, and of course I feel it's almost more true because, you know, you're up all night long, you're taking care of the baby, everything is all about taking care of the baby. It's even more true when you're a parent than when I wrote it as a, a person without kids. Lazy Little Loafers, obviously a huge departure from Orchid Thief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and that you're really somebody who loves research and you love traveling, mm -hmm. you love meeting people. And did you just think like, wow, this is the easiest gig ever. <laughs> Got what, like 24 pages here? I'm, I know, yeah, yeah. Are you, gonna, are you gonna switch over? No, I'm not. <laughs> um, first of all, there is a realization that you have or, you know, in page one or two of working on a children's book is that it's incredibly hard. But what happens is you're suddenly reading all these kids' books and you think, man, I could have done that. Look at Goodnight Moon, it's so few words. The reason that there are classics of children's writing, even picture books that have very few words that nobody has topped is because it's not easy. 